Greetings! Today I am asking and indeed answering the question, are catch cans worth it on the RS? Okay, in the engine bay, if you have been following my videos, you will know that I have both the CCV side catch can from Radium Engineering and indeed the PCV side catch can also from Radium Engineering, the matching set. So I guess I'm going to split this into two. Um, we're going to consider the CCV and the PCV and then see what we think. So I suppose the most obvious metric to gauge whether they are worth it is to see what is inside the cans. Now both cans have been installed. Um, I have haven't emptied them for a, quite a large amount of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the contents and the radiums are very handy because they have the little dipstick. We can check the contents without having to undo anything, which is really cool. So we'll see what's in both catch cans, see if it warrants emptying. Now we're talking a good few thousand miles since I've even checked what is in them. And then we can make an assessment as to whether they are worth it. All right then, getting the dipsticks out pretty tightly in there. If they are too tight to get out with just your hands, very carefully you can use a 10 mil deep socket just to loosen it up. Okay, that's it loosened. So now I should be able to get that with my fingers. There is a little grippy section on top of the dipstick, but this CCV one is kind of obscured by the battery here. So it's kind of just a little bit awkward to get in there and get the right kind of leverage with your fingers. There we go, that's it, out. So I mean we can immediately see there, hopefully, that there's like a tiny little dot of oil on the bottom of the stick, but not actually very much. So obviously the correct thing to do is to wipe it off and dip it back in. So, yeah, I mean, there's basically nothing on this. Um, so I did notice this back when, like a couple of months even after I installed this, I installed the CCV side, like probably closer to the start of the year. And really it doesn't seem to be catching a whole lot. Like the tiny little dot in the bottom is kind of it, you know, so it's catching something, but very, very little over a very long and extended period of time. We'll move on then to check out what is in the PCV side. It's easier to get at, so you can probably just do it with your fingers. Okay, so look, got a bit of a drip there, but yeah, you can see immediately there is stuff on here. Okay, so having wiped it off, we go back in, give it a bit of a screen. And then back out again. As you can see, it's even dripping off the end of the dipstick there. So quite a reasonable amount caught in that can. I probably should have emptied it a while ago. I just haven't got around to it until now. So yes, obviously there's, because there was practically nothing in the CCV side can, there's no point in trying to empty it. But I will now empty the PCV side can. All right, then as far as emptying the radium catch cans, obviously like most catch cans, the um, normal way to empty would be to undo the can, so unscrewing it. And indeed, I probably could get my hand in here. Yeah, so I have my hand right on the can, so I could probably unscrew it and then sort of just gently bring it out up through this space. Now, that's only really possible because I've got the mountain inlet manifold. If I still had the stock one, the stock one kind of has bits of plastic that stick out more, um, so that wouldn't really be possible. So in that situation, then your options would be to start dismantling stuff in order to get access to unscrew it and remove the can. Or Radium actually have um, an extra solution that you can get as an additional part for your catch cans. It's a pet cock, so it screws into the bottom of the catch can and then it's got a little tap that you can open, drain off the oil, close it and you're done. So that's a nice um, solution that doesn't really require the dismantling of anything really. Um, of course then it is additional cost and you do have to put it somewhere under there, sort of you probably have to cable tie it somewhere. Um, but yeah, I mean, it would be a decent enough solution. I'm not quite sure what the availability is like of those in the UK. I know that some radium items are not easy to get here. There is then another solution which I am going to give a go to uh, right now. And that is using a couple of very easily, cheaply available items. 
All right, then what I have here is a basic 20 mil syringe. And then we have this, which I believe is a mixing quill, but it essentially is a tube that you can connect onto the bottom of your syringe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this onto the end of this. Then I'm gonna place that down into the catch can via the dipstick hole, which of course is fairly unique to the radium system. And then I should be able to just syringe out the oil without having to do anything awkward in here and without having to go and source the petcock thing for the radium catch can. So let's give that a go right now. All right, here we are then. Very, very simple. Uh, so we just place that in here. Yep, there we go, that's it all the way down in. So then very simply, oh, hello. <laughs> okay, so I think we're gonna have more than 20 mil. So I might need to get a receptacle to put this oil into. Okay, so I've got a, just a random glass here. So I've got my first batch of 20 mil. So then we'll just get rid of that into here. Ugh, it's very black and yicky looking. So I'll just keep doing that basically until there's no more oil. It's just kind of like a dance of not letting the tube touch the bottom of the can because then it isn't like sucking anything out. Yeah, I think we're done. So, the, well, there we go. That is all of our oil removed from the can. Just a little bonus segment then. I will see if I can get the can off just in this method now that we have it emptied. Um, so yeah, I mean, I can get in here and I can screw it and we're screwing that way of course to loosen. It will be interesting to see I suppose if I've got all of the oil out using the syringe method or if there's much of anything left in the can. Final step, there we go, that's it out. So hopefully you can see there, there is a little bit left in the can, but I pretty much got it all the way out. Um, so, I mean, that was a little bit awkward squeezing out there. And like I said before, if you are running the stock Intec manifold, that would pretty much be too tight, pretty much impossible. So if you have that set up, then you're gonna need an alternative method of removal. Since we have this out, might as well just get rid of that tiny little bit that we missed. Mmm, lovely. It's just so nasty and dirty, isn't it? Mm. So there we go, I can get that back in place now. Um, while I've got it out, you can see on the bottom there, right in the middle, you would use an Allen key to unscrew that little like plug, and then that's where you would put the petcock in, if indeed you go down that route. Okay, then we'll just shimmy it down in the same way that we shimmyed it out. Okay, and then position it on the bottom of the can. And then we're going this way to tighten. There we go, so that is our can nice and tight on there. Um, so yeah, just make sure everything is nice and tight if you are going down the method of removing the actual can. So there you go, like, that is quite a lot. That is about 80 milliliters of nasty, dirty, sludgy oil that was caught in the can and would otherwise have just gone straight back into the intake manifold and been burned in the engine and just, I mean, ugh. That's not an insignificant amount. Like I said, I probably should have emptied it a little bit sooner. I will commit to emptying it more often now. I think maybe every couple of thousand miles would be an appropriate interval. Um, but yeah, that is a lot. At this point then, very simply, we can just put our dipstick back in and screw it down, make sure that it is nice and tightly on. There we go. 
And that is our emptying process complete. And indeed the section of this video where we can assess whether it's worth having that can in place or not. So there you go, that is our can emptied. A reasonably significant amount of oil removed from the PCV side, but then hardly anything was even in the can on the CCV side. So then answering the question, is it worth putting catch cans into your RS or indeed your ST or any similarly engined vehicle? I would say yes, absolutely it is, but I would say you could probably skip doing the CCV side because it's not really catching much oil at all. But the PCV side, 100%, if you're only going to do one do the PCV side. If you're gonna, if you wanna do both, then you know, they do certainly look nice in the engine bay as a set, and it is catching a little bit, but it'll probably take years before I even need to empty the CCV side catch can. So go get yourself a PCV side catch can. Get the radium, the, the radium is really nicely made. It looks really awesome. Um, there is of course the Mishimoto as well. Um, but yeah, I would recommend the radium. It is doing a great job, clearly. Just empty it a bit more often than perhaps I have, and you'll be doing well. And I hope you like my little syringe oil removal method. Do you think I should go and get the Petcock system that Radium offer, or is this good enough? I mean, I think this is good enough. Let me know what you think down below. And yeah, that's about it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do like, share, and subscribe for more content to come very, very soon. Thank you once again. Cheers.